Good morning, students. Today we will start with structure of atom. Although the concept of the atom dates back to the ideals of Democritus, but the English chemist John Dalton formulated the first description of atom as a fundamental building block of chemical structure. In 1804, John Dalton proposed a classical model of atom. According to Dalton's atomic theory, matter is composed of extremely small particles called atoms. Atoms are indivisible. That means atoms can neither be created nor be destroyed. Atoms of a particular element are all alike and differ from atoms of other elements. Now the atoms of the same element, they have same atomic weight, whereas the atoms of different element, they have different atomic weights. According to Dalton, atoms take part in a chemical reaction. Compounds are produced from different whole number combination of atoms. That means the atoms of an element combine in a simple numerical ratio with those of other elements to form a compound. So according to Dalton's theory, an atom is defined as the smallest part of an element that takes part in a chemical reaction. So Dalton regarded atoms as structureless, hard spherical particles that is indivisible. However, researchers like Michael Faraday, J.J. Thomson, William Crookes and others conducted experiments on electrical discharge through different gases at low pressure with a high potential difference. And they have gifted us with fundamental information about the fundamental particles in an atom. These fundamental particles are referred to as building blocks of atom. Presently, we will study about three fundamental particles of an atom, electrons, protons and neutrons. Now we will discuss discovery of electron, cathode ray discharge tube. The splitting of atoms into further subatomic particles was convincingly demonstrated by experiments involving conduction of electricity through gases at low pressure. William Crookes studied the conduction of electricity through gases at low pressure and under the influence of high potential gradient or high potential difference. Under ordinary conditions, gases are bad conductors of electricity. But a gas becomes a good conductor of electricity if the pressure of the gas is very low and the voltage applied is very high. These conditions are achieved in a discharge tube. So what is a discharge tube? A discharge tube is a long glass tube having two thin metal plates sealed at the two ends and these metal plates are termed as electrodes. Now these metal plates are connected to a high voltage source. The electrodes connected to the negative terminal of the source is termed as the cathode and the electrode connected to the positive terminal of the source is termed as the anode. There is also a side tube which can be connected to an exhaust pump 
or a vacuum pump used for lowering the pressure of the gas inside the discharge tube. This is the setup of the discharge tube. When a gas is taken at the discharge tube and high voltage is applied across the terminal, keeping the pressure inside the tube extremely low in the range of 0 0.01 to 0 0.001 millimeter of mercury, then what happens? An electric current flows through the tube. This flow of electricity is associated with a glow or rays of light which have their origin at the cathode. This rays travel from the cathode towards the anode. Since these rays originate at the cathode, they are also termed as cathode rays. Now let us discuss the properties of cathode rays. Cathode rays originate at the cathode and travel in straight lines. When an object is placed in between the cathode and the anode, a shadow of the object falls on the wall opposite to that of the cathode. We know that a shadow can be formed only when the rays travel in a straight line. So cathode rays travel in straight lines and they originate at the cathode. Cathode rays possess kinetic energy and are composed of material particles. When a small paddle wheel is placed in the path of the cathode rays, the wheel starts rotating. This mechanical motion of the paddle wheel is possible only when these rays possess kinetic energy and are composed of material particles. So, cathode rays possess kinetic energy and they are composed of material particles. Cathode rays get deflected towards the positive electrode when passed through an electric field. When an electric field is applied to a stream of cathode rays, they deviate from their normal path and get inclined towards the positive electrode. This deflection of cathode rays towards positive plate or positive electrode clearly indicates that these rays are negatively charged. So cathode rays are negatively charged. <coughs> cathode rays get deflected from their normal path when passed through a magnetic field. The effect of magnetic field on cathode rays further supports the fact that these are composed of charged particles. Cathode rays produce fluorescence when they strike the glass wall of the discharge tube. Cathode rays produce ionization in gases. This property supports the view that cathode rays possess kinetic energy and are composed of material particles. When passed through a gas, these energetic constituent particles of cathode rays attack on the atoms of the gas and force them to get ionized. Cathode rays produce X-rays when they strike heavy metals. When cathode rays are made to fall on heavy metals such as tungsten, silver, copper, etc., X-rays are produced. Cathode rays produce heating effect. When cathode rays are made to fall on a thin metal foil, they heat it. The particles constituting the cathode rays have a fixed charge to mass ratio. That means the cathode rays, they have fixed E by M ratio. This ratio does not change with the gas. 
the electrodes and the kind of glass used for making the discharge tube. That means this E by M ratio of cathode ray is constant or fixed. Sir J. J. Thomson concluded that the particles constituting the cathode rays are universal constituent of all atoms. And he named these particles as electrons in 1897. Sir J.J. Thomson determined in 1897 charge to mass ratio of an electron. So E by M according to J.J. Thomson is equal to 1.78 into 10 to the power 8 coulomb per gram. Millikan determined the charge of an electron. E is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. So E by M according to Thomson is equal to 1.78 into 10 to the power 8 coulomb per gram. Whereas the charge of electron E is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 Coulomb. Putting the value of E, that is a charge of electron, in equation 1, we can calculate M and the value of M comes out to be 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg. So, absolute charge and mass of an electron, what is E? E is the absolute charge of an electron which is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. And what is the absolute mass of an electron? M is equal to 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg. Now relative charge and mass of an electron. Electron is said to have a charge of minus 1 unit. The mass of an electron is about 1 by 1840, that of hydrogen atom. And so it is treated as negligible. So in our next class, we will learn about anode rays and proton. Thank you.